I'm gonna I'm gonna merch it. I can ship two goods. England, you want some goods? One of your goods shipped? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, I would love it. Yes. I feel like yeah, that sounds great. Yes, yeah. Spain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or yes, people. Yeah. We'll take it. So you guys each get one treasury. Awesome. Is that cool? God. We probably just get three turning around for us. Three, I took. Two, I dismantled Spain's one, navy flip. with no losses. Um, oh my gosh! <laughs> wow! <laughs> We have one prestige. We have one prestige. Whose fault is that? Yeah. Alright, it looks like we got two. They destroyed our entire merchant fleet. Now, I guess we surrender. Yeah, sure. Dirty prestige. Yeah, this feels nice. <laughs> You're never gonna get out of the Treaty of Tordesillas. I think we didn't understand the true power of Britain's navy in this scenario, and I think if I'm lucky enough to be Britain again, I will definitely use it. I think every game except for Liberty or Death, I've had like a problem with how you actually get victory points, how you actually win, which makes sense because like I think. I mean, like, you win a war, that's your goal. But other than that, like, you don't really win history, I don't think. The problems I'm seeing is that too often the games we're looking at have just been sort of reinforcing uh, traditional or outdated or sort of very pro, I guess, white male kinds of historical arguments. You have to make this entertaining as well as educational. So you're going to lose some history in that because not all history is fun. So this is Liberty or Death. We are playing the Patriots at table B. We're about seven cards into the game. We haven't had first winter quarters yet. They took Boston, Boston from away from us before we even had a chance to defend yeah. it. That was not great. No. The French took Savannah from them with our help, so that was great. By them, of course, we mean the British. Yeah. I think we just killed it. Yeah. We did pretty well. We had a battle. Um, battle. That's what it's called, right? Yeah, we had a yeah. battle against uh, the French. A, for a New free York. Bar march and then a free battle. Uh, yeah, we got lucky with that end. with that uh, card, the king. Yeah. God save the king. Yeah, we really just God saved the king out of the French, and won the day. Shifted some support, got some great casualty differentials. Mm -hmm. Cool. So uh, we just did a bunch of raids, and we got murked. Uh, <laughs> I guess to elaborate, so we raided into three different American colonies. So we pushed all of our forces from Indian territory, and then we're starting to amass these war parties everywhere. And it didn't really do much. Like that action, like it like reduced the um, unrest, and it kind of like got rid of some of their support. But it's not really doing anything else besides that. Now I think we're gonna be weakened, and they're just gonna kill us. If you look at Liberty or Death, like you can read about how the British had problems going outside the cities, but you don't really understand it until you actually experience that in the game. So like it's a meeting that has problems, but when you combine with everything else, it really kind of reinforces us. In textbooks, it's details and it's specific facts and it's almost memorization where games, you enter into a mindset that engagement is like necessary, it's mandatory to play a game that you need to like be a part of it. Oh, yeah. Something about the mechanics and the way that you have to be on your toes and thinking very actively does um, allow for it more of that secondary learning that we've been uh, reading about. It's active history and you can be in the shoes to some extent of you know actual historical figures, which is helpful for like people who learn you know, through doing things like kinesthetic learners and stuff like that. So I do think they have their place. I am playing Sherman. We just finished the game and it was table A2. Uh, I was very close to winning. I had points from every single debate track, so that ended up adding up because there were two ties in the debates. Um, it ended up adding up to 16 points, which would have almost had me win, but Victoria was so far ahead um, from just playing in the assembly room that um, I tied for second and I was one point behind. So it was a very close three-way game um, with uh, Danny sadly trailing far behind us with 11 points. But it's definitely interesting seeing how the Constitution ended very much uh, counterfactual to the true Constitution. And it was only out of strategy for being on the winning side the majority of the time. So it was not actually really any historical purpose um, to this. Yeah, and I was Madison and I ended up winning the 
side for anti-federalism in the debate track and got that as the last point. So the game is very ahistorical, but it was still uh, interesting to see how it all worked out. Like all board games have subtle arguments in like their mechanics, their victory objectives, like even the way they decide to portray the box or even any, like there's all these little pieces that kind of come together. And like, I guess every game inherently is like a system and you're trying to ex figure out when you're playing, like the immersive quality of the game is like figuring out how to work the system. All these games kind of can approach that and obviously like the argument is in how, what they choose to model and what is simulated. When you look deeply at the mechanics of the games that are well constructed, you can see a historical argument being made. Like there are specific small, small little mechanics um, that you might not consider if we hadn't done specific readings, but if we look uh, So right now we are looking at discoveries and within the camp. So first of all, I have my five die that are my own die. Um, and then we kind of have my player card. Um, which has all of the base actions I can do, which I can eventually build upon by getting some of the Native American cards. I think that I originally had two Indians and two journals, and I was hoping that I could complete this card and complete another, but unfortunately, none of these line up, so I just kind of didn't luck out. I'm going to... I basically use my Discover an Indian thing, and I can, with a single one, I can take a Friendly Tribe card, which is basically like a... I think of it sort of like a trade relationship with them where they help me where I exchange like a credit or some sort of like mediocre frontiersman terrible deal thing <laughs> to get the help of a tribe. I thought that was so interesting. I didn't know that, a, I mean, that the census recorded that first of all and then also that a majority I chose like identify, self identify with that term. I remember I only know it because I remember writing a paper on this last year. Okay. Like, no. Somebody who's going to buy Liberty or Death, more likely than not, is not only an experienced board game player, because I don't think anybody's going to pick it up for their five-year-old, um, but I also think someone who's going to pick up a game like that has a background knowledge of the American Revolution, so in that way, I think the market kind of makes it so that the games can also teach about history. All these games can be used for memorizing historical facts, um, and I think that contextualizing it within a class is what really makes it go from something that you do for fun, that like maybe you learn some facts from, to something that you study in depth. I feel that that framework already exists for other uh, mediums we may use. Like we don't, we don't just go into watching a movie without trying to like think about maybe like some cinema studies or like some scholarship on the movie already. Um, yeah, so I was really, really far behind. Um, but luckily I was able to get a few canoe canoes together and the cool thing about this game is it only takes one card powered up a little more um, to do a lot so I just used all three at the same time and moved up 11 spaces okay so if I play this one zero one right so that's two times one strength so I get two food yeah okay, I'm gonna buy this guy right here. Hey. You up? Yikes. Hey. That's my turn? Yes. Um, and a lot of the pieces that like we've been reading from educators, I think are very concerned with the idea of a board game teaching uh, you know, uppercase H history. Like, this is what you play, and you're telling a kid that this is what that time period was. And I think that's very flawed or a problematic history is just as valuable because it, you put it in front of someone and say, okay, tell me why you have a problem with this. Go find like other people who agree with you or like facts to back up your argument. Tell me why you have a problem with it. And that's what we've been doing this whole time is like looking at these games not as a monolith but as another interpretation of the past.